healthy and happy at home. Do you remember what we had learned in our last class? We had learned a very interesting story about a baby elephant carrying. I hope you must have read the lesson at home and tried to understand the story. And also you might have learned a lot about the behavior of elephants. And children, as I had told you before, we do learn a lot from animals. We also learn a lot from the mother nature the trees, the sea, the ocean, okay? Now, before I move on to my topic today, I would like to draw your attention towards the words that I have written for you. Camel, sand, oasis, carol, hot and dry, sand dunes. Now when you look at these words children, what comes to your mind? Try to guess. Oh you have guessed right. It is the desert. When the word desert comes to your mind, you imagine long stretches of sand. The long stretches, you do find oasis, kind of green island, with little bit of greenery and water. And also, children, you might imagine caravan. Now, what is caravan, children? You might see a caravan in a desert, and we all also know that the camel is known as the ship of the desert. So you can see caravan of camels. You know, a long line of camels traveling in the desert. You know, it, it's uh, really so pleasing to watch the camels all walking in a row. And as they are sheep of the desert, they do carry people and their things from one place to another place. Now children, we are really blessed to be part of these islands, isn't it? Our islands are so beautiful with innumerable gifts of mother nature. We see greenery around and so we get to inhale fresh air, isn't it? Thousands of tourists come to our islands, you know, to be in the lap of nature, to enjoy the beauty of nature. So for us in the islands, it's very difficult to imagine how a life would be in a desert. So today let's try to understand about desert. Okay, so our lesson today is the desert. Now, before I actually start the lesson, I would like to show you some pictures. I hope by looking at the pictures, you can get an idea of what a desert looks like. So here we can see an oasis children in the picture. Okay? And also you can see a caravan. I was talking to you about caravan. Okay? Camels walking in a row in the hot sand. And you can also see the oasis with palm trees. And a pool of water there. So it is in children that when we talk of desert, you know, we think that life is very difficult in a desert. It is not possible for people to live. But deserts are beautiful too. So how are deserts beautiful? Let's try to understand. Uh, if you have a text with you at home, 
please open your text and look at your text as we try to read or you can look at the screen too. Now a desert is generally without water and vegetation. No greenery. A green patch with fresh water and green trees in the middle of a vast desert is a beautiful sight. And what was that children? That is oasis. As I told you, it's like a green island amidst the hot desert. Now, a desert is not always too hot. It can be too cool also. Isn't that interesting children? Have you ever imagined that a desert can be too cold? There are deserts that are too cold also. Now, those of us who live in regions covered with forests and surrounded by hills, we find it difficult to imagine what a desert is really like. As I told you, we, you know, the people of these islands, it's difficult for us to imagine a life in a desert. The popular belief is that uh, it is an endless stretch of sand where no rain falls and without uh, vegetation, okay? It's dry, hot, waterless and without shelter. But it is not always entirely correct. For those who have studied it, the desert can be a beautiful place. It is the home of a variety of people, animals and plants that have learned to live under very hot and dry conditions. So children, people do live in deserts and also uh, some plants grow in deserts and we do find some animals who have adapted themselves to the conditions there hot climate, the hot sand, the sand dunes, very little vegetation. So, it is the gift of God to mankind that our earth is a variety of uh, physical conditions. And people, animals and plants learn to adapt themselves in those conditions. I also told you children, there are oases in the deserts which are green with a pool of water and that really looks like a green island. It's beautiful. True, the ground is uh, not always hidden by a cover of grass, plants and trees you know, as it is in other climates. But whenever it rains, uh, which is very rare in deserts, the flowers bloom and the sight can be as rewarding as that of any tropical garden. So deserts do have flowers and they do bloom whenever there is rain. A desert is not always a flat, unchanging wasteland of dry sand. It may have mountains and hills. It may have an oasis. We have learnt what an oasis is. The oasis can be big or small. An oasis is a green island in the middle of a desert where a spring or a well gives plants and trees a better chance to grow. A desert may be hot like the Thar Desert or cold like Ladakh. But generally speaking, if a place has little or no water and vegetation, people usually call it a desert. That's what I had told you in the beginning. The moment the word desert comes to our mind, we imagine sand, hot sand, stretching, uh, to long distances, no water, no vegetation and we think life is very 
difficult there. Some deserts are almost totally without water. In such places, strong winds blow, raising heaps of sand and depositing them as mounds. These are called sand dunes. You can see heaps of sand there children. Uh, mounds means big heaps. So in a desert you also find heaps of sand collected in different places. And they keep shifting and moving when the wind blows. Okay. Now few plants can survive on such dry shifting sands. Now these uh, mounds of sand keeps shifting as the winds uh, blow and they do keep changing their positions and you can find these heaps of sand in a desert in different places. Now desert plants and animals you know they learn to live in a desert. They adjust themselves to the conditions there. You know they can live with less water and the camel as I told you is one such animal that can live according to the conditions that prevail in a desert. Okay and uh, all living things need water. We know that isn't it? In order to survive. So the few plants and animals that live in deserts have developed the ability to require less water than most plants and animals. Now the camel uh, which is popularly known as the ship of the desert can drink a lot of water at a time. Camels can remain without water also for many days together and the reason is that they sweat very little. When compared to human beings, we do sweat a lot, isn't it? And when it is very hot, we do sweat more. And camels can, you know, stand high body temperature. They do not uh, sweat and therefore can retain the water they drink for longer periods of time. Now, the smaller desert animals do not drink water. They burrow underground during the hot day and come out at night to eat. Now what is the meaning of burrow children? To move under the ground. You know some animals they dig the ground and they just burrow. They go inside. They go under the ground and they you know remain inside. So they don't drink water. And uh, only uh, they come out at night. During the daytime when it is too hot, they remain, they remain inside the earth. During night, they come out. Okay? To eat. Now some of them eat other animals and get the water they need from the moisture in the meat. Now others eat plants and seeds and get the water they need from plant juices. So when these animals don't drink water children, where do they get the water from? From the moisture in the meat and also from the uh, plants juices. Okay. Now the smaller desert animals do not drink water. They burrow under the ground during the hot day and come out uh, at night to eat. Okay. Now, burrow here means children to move under the ground. Moisture is wetness. Adapt. Adapt means children to change. To change your lifestyle according to the conditions. Absorb means to take in completely. Now, variations of temperature. As I told you children, the animals uh, adapt themselves to the temperature uh, that is there in the desert. In humid climates, 
children humid means containing moisture and the moisture in the air acts like a blanket and protects the earth surface from the hot rays of the sun so the places where the climate is humid you know the moisture in the air it protects the earth surface from the hot rays of the sun but in a desert the absence of this blanket you know causes the desert to heat up rapidly during the day and to cool off rapidly at night now children deserts are an important part of nature's great plan they are there like the dense forests and the deep oceans just because they are hot and dry one should not look upon them as useless parts of the earth variations means changes okay so children i hope you have learned a lot about this and after having learned about desert your opinion about the desert might also have changed by now is it it deserts too are beautiful and there are animals plants do grow there and people do live in deserts so children uh, you must read the chapter very carefully and also try to look at the word meanings and try to understand what uh, message do we get from these uh, you know information that we gather uh, from each lesson okay now that you have understood what a desert is so you must look at the question answers that are given at the back of your textbook okay now you have been asked to describe a desert and also there are activities for you where you have to go to the library find some books and find out about the life of people in a desert what kind of animals are there okay and how is life there in a desert also uh, you can describe the camel as the shape of the desert so for example if you describe the camel okay you can say it is the ship of the desert and you can say it can remain without water for a long time okay and you can say it carries people and goods okay then you can also talk about a camel that is a, a beautiful sight in a desert so you can uh, write about the camel with the help of these points now when you have to talk about the desert if you want to write a small paragraph about a desert so what are the points you need to remember it's a hot and dry place but you also need to mention that some deserts are too cold also and deserts uh, are not always a difficult place to live in you know they are beautiful with beautiful animals there beautiful people there okay then you can talk about the oasis about the sand dunes you can collect information about the people and 
animals. There you can talk about the plants. Okay. And you can also write about the camel. Okay. Here you can talk about date palms. So the people here that we tell you children also are nomads. Who are nomads? You have learnt about nomads in your history textbook. Nomads are people who keep moving from one place to another uh, along with their uh, cattle, along with the animals in search of food and water. So in a desert, these nomads, they keep moving from one place to another place in search of water and in search of food. So they carry their things along with them and move and they keep shifting their shelters. That is why they are called as nomads. So when you describe a desert, you can, uh, you know, describe keeping in mind all these points, right? And also you can, you know, talk about the people there, about the life there, you know, and how the animals there adapt themselves to the living conditions. Then you can talk about, you know, the climatic conditions there. In India also, uh, Rajasthan, no, is a desert. It's too hot. But if we, uh, you know, are able to adopt methods of irrigation, we may be able to, uh, you know, uh, start agriculture too, and uh, there could be some greenery. And also, children, when you, you know you know, try to learn more about deserts, you also should find the names of different deserts of the world. And write them down in your notebook. You can also try to, uh, you know, gather information about different types of deserts and the life of people there. So, you have to explore a lot. You need to read a lot. The more you read, the more you explore, the more knowledge you gain. So, we have learnt about the deserts, about the conditions there, the climatic conditions, about the plants, about the animals that are there in the desert, and how do they adapt themselves to the conditions there. Okay, now you must also look at the question answers that are given at the back of the lesson and try to answer them. And also children, when you read the lesson or story, you must also try to frame your own questions. That is very important. You know, for example, a very simple question could be, you know, you know, what is the camel called in a desert? The camel is called the ship of the desert. Or which animal is called the ship of the desert? So the answer would be the camel is called the ship of the desert. What is the place in the desert which looks like a green island called? So the answer could be an oasis. And you know, when you see a row of camels walking, you know, maybe people or with uh, materials on their back, what is it called? It is called a caravan. So you can frame very small questions like this. So you also will learn, you know, the art of framing questions. So children, when you read in this way, you comprehend the story 
variable and the concepts that you learn remains with you. You do remember whatever you have learned. So you must uh, try to write down the questions. These days you get multiple choice questions. You do get options and you have to choose the correct option. So if you have to uh, answer these multiple choice questions correctly, you need to read with proper understanding. That is the reason I told you, you need to frame very simple questions with one word answer or maybe uh, answer could be in one or two sentences. So that will help you to understand the lesson better. Children, I hope uh, you have understood whatever we have learned today about the desert and also you must collect lot of information from other sources. Okay? When you read the textbook, you do get some information but you must explore. You must read books from the library. Now you must, uh, you know, try to get books about deserts and read them and you know note down the information or the knowledge which you gain. Also you might get information about the deserts uh, from the television, from the internet, from the radio and from the newspapers. So you must explore, you must go beyond the textbook and you must gain lot of information. And that is how you will be able to develop your creativity. So children, I will see you in the next class with a new topic. Until then, take care. Happy reading.